can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders. You know, I always suggest, AJ, at the front of the interview, check out past episodes. Um, we have a mutual friend, Ian Garlic, who uh, is an expert at video. You should check out StoryCruise.com. But he talked about when his family was opening a restaurant, they had live dolphins. So you literally have to watch that episode to hear why they had live dolphins, how they got live dolphins. But it's just... Um, you know, the creative entrepreneur finds way to market a business and it's kind of cool. Um, also you could check out, I, I had a interesting interview with the, one of the co-founders of pipe drive, um, or mass, he had brain surgery, got married and he moved to Estonia in the same year. And, um, at the time AJ was interesting. They had 10,000 paying customers. Now, when I looked at their website, they over have over a hundred thousand paying customers uh, in Pipe Drive. I actually use Pipe Drive. I love Pipe Drive. So check it out. Check out the episode. And I love hearing the challenge stories because it's sometimes a bumpy road, you know. And um, before I introduce today's guest, I you know anyone who has a B two B business, anyone has a business, I think should be using LinkedIn in some capacity, in my opinion, right, AJ? And so I'm going to introduce AJ in a second. You can see his website. I've had it on the whole time. B two linked, right? And so. I didn't even realize I was up there, but we will show, we'll go some through some actual case studies and some actual, some ad breakdown on this interview. And so I'm excited about that. Um, but this is brought to you by Rise25. I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And what we do is we help B2B businesses give to and connect to their Dream 100 uh, relationships, partnerships, clients. And what we do is we help you run your podcast. Okay. I've been doing this for over 10 years. Okay. When... I don't even know, AJ, like the software that we use at the time, the files were so big, it was crazy. <laughs> um, but podcasting has been one of the best things for my business and my life. I formed amazing relationships. Um, and so if you have a business, just like any, just like AJ would say, if you have a business, you, you should be on LinkedIn. And if you have a high enough client lifetime value, you should probably be running LinkedIn ads. That's how I feel about podcasting. I think every business should have a podcast. Um, so check out rise25.com if you have questions and happy to answer them. Okay. Um, today's guest, I'm super excited. AJ Wilcox, who's referred, like I said, by Ian Garlic of Story Cruise. Um, AJ Wilcox is a LinkedIn ads pro. And so if you're like, I don't, I know I should probably be doing that, but I'm not sure how well, that's where he comes in. He's a LinkedIn ads pro who founded b2linked.com. I'll bring it up so you can see it right there. Um, and they're a LinkedIn ad specific ad agency. So B2 Link has managed over $130 million in ad spend across 400 ad accounts. He's an official LinkedIn partner, host of the LinkedIn Ads Show podcast. Obviously, he knows the power of podcasting and check that out. He's managed some of the world's largest LinkedIn ad accounts and he's helped companies like Hired, Bamboo HR, ClearLink, and many more. Um, so check out his website. Um, plus, he does all this with four kids. Okay, that's a feat in itself. AJ, thanks for joining me. Jeremy, thanks so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. You know, um, I, I want to, we'll break down. We'll do some breakdown. You know, I have my profile up. I have your profile up. I have, we'll, we'll look at some ad accounts, but let's start off with who should be running LinkedIn ads. Yeah, I think it comes down to understanding that LinkedIn ads are inherently just more expensive than other channels. Uh, you might pay two to $3 a click for business to business traffic on Facebook, uh, on LinkedIn, you're probably going to pay eight to $11 a click on average. Um, so significantly more expensive. What that means though, is you want to have a higher lifetime value or a large deal size at the end of, uh, of your funnel when you're getting people there so that you can make sure that you, you get a return on your investment. So what yeah. we find is if you're doing anything, you know, lead generation wise, where the lifetime value of your customer is over $15,000, then LinkedIn ads is a total no brainer. Uh, if it's, you know, let's say less than 10,000, um, it may not be a great channel for you. Um, so yeah, I think that's the biggest one is like, do you have a large lifetime value? Can you afford LinkedIn's clicks? Yeah. Which is good and it's bad. I mean, it's good because it's a barrier of entry. If, you know, someone one has to have their funnel dialed in. So something spits out the other side. Right. And and two, if it's expensive, then more people aren't going to flood the market because you're paying much more for clicks. 
Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, and we find it, uh, the types of leads who come to you with from search channels like uh, Google Ads, Bing Ads, SEO, they're people who know what it is they're looking for, but you don't have any way to qualify them. Like, are they at a big enough company to afford my high price product? Um, Facebook, their B2B targeting isn't very good. So you get a lot of the same concerns. But with LinkedIn, the targeting is amazing. We can target by specific roles in specific sizes and industries of companies. We can target specific companies by name. And so, yeah, we, we pay a lot for the clicks, but they are exactly the people we want to make sure we get in front of. So walk me through a, a funnel. So like you're setting the ads up, what, what elements you think sh should be included? And then where do you want that going? I don't know if you want to just talk in general, or we could talk about bamboo HR for a second. Cause you, you said you, uh, a few things shifted for them that they had more success with. Yeah. Yeah. So in general, uh, anytime that I'm building ads for LinkedIn, I keep in mind the acronym AMO AMO. And it stands for your audience, your message, and your offer. So those are the three things that every social campaign needs. And so we go to LinkedIn and we define who our audience is. And I would say at first, let's be as specific as we can. You narrow down on the exact people who feel the pain that you solve. Um, then you kind of flip over to the O, uh, the offer. This is what you're actually asking people to do. It's your call to action. There are what I would call very like, low friction, low touch kinds of, uh, of, um, offers like come and read this blog post. There are very high friction offers like buy something now or talk to our sales rep. And there are things in between. What we find is the very low friction and the very high friction, the extremes don't work very well on LinkedIn. Hmm. Uh, of course we can get people to, to click, to come and read a blog post, but blog posts don't convert. And so you're paying this, you know, eight to $11 every time someone clicks to come and read a blog post that won't convert. And so you won't be happy with your cost per lead. Um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, you're saying, come and buy something or uh, come and talk to a sales rep. And these are things that are very high in fric friction. They're very scary to a cold audience and they won't click, they won't convert. And so you end up with, again, like really high costs per lead. So what you really want to shoot for is, uh, an offer that's in the middle, uh, gated content, lead magnets, something that's a little bit softer where you are asking for their personal information, um, but you're also giving them something that they value, something that's going to solve a pain point or satisfy a curiosity for them. What's another big mistake? So a big mistake would be too high friction or even too low friction because that doesn't convert. What's another big mistake people make uh, with LinkedIn ads? I, I think the one of the big mistakes, I mean, maybe you're avoiding the extremes just right. So you're going, let's do some gated content. Um, but you didn't come up with gated content that actually solves a, a problem for people. If you're just saying like, oh, we need something to put behind it. <laughs> let's a, throw a something up. Yeah. Yeah. How about a product brochure? No, no one is willing to give you their information for a product brochure that they know they could just find on your website anyway. Um, so I, I think it's making sure that you are in touch with the customer in touch with what their needs are so that you can actually say, here's a report, here's a guide, here's a free checklist or cheat sheet that you are actually going to find valuable enough to put in your information for. Let's talk about Bamboo HR. You know, the funny thing you mentioned that because I was looking at their site the other day for us. Oh, so cool. um, I'd love to hear what their opt-in is because I'll probably opt in for it. But what, <laughs> what did Bamboo HR do? Well, this was a, a few years ago, but it was a really interesting case study for us. Mm -hmm. They gave us four eBooks to, to try to pitch. They understood you stay away from the extremes. And so they gave us these four eBooks and our team went to uh, this rapid iterative testing of images and ad copy, uh, different motivations. We tried everything we could and all four of these, um, these eBooks, we couldn't get a download for under $127 wow. per. And I went, oh man, we've been, you know, we've been working together for three months at this point. I was sure they were going to fire us because, you know, no one's willing to pay $127 for well, you know, downloading an ebook. <laughs> I mean, if they get a conversion out of it. Well, you yeah, know exactly. I mean? Yeah. yeah. Um, but overnight, uh, our rep, or not our rep, our, our uh, contact there within the company sent over a new piece of content and it was called the ultimate guide to onboarding. And we did exactly the same thing. We didn't do anything different. We wrote uh, our copy the same way, used the same kind of imagery. And overnight, our 
conversion rates tripled and our click through rates doubled wow. and costs dropped significantly. Um, we ended up getting a cost per lead that was under twenty seven dollars. And we've got this this issue anytime you do social advertising of saturation where people have seen the same thing over and over and they, they stop wanting to click and convert. Um, this same asset, oh man, it lived for like uh, eight, nine months straight wow. before they found another piece of content that would outperform it. So uh, it doesn't reflect on us terribly well. Like we didn't do anything to cause that, but it does punctuate the importance of having an offer that really does solve a pain point. Yeah, that's the funny thing, AJ, with this is you get blamed if it doesn't work, even though it's kind of not your fault that they give you an asset. And then you can't take credit because they came up with that asset. So you kind of, I don't know, lose either way. But um, I figure we'll break this down a little bit, right? And maybe just have you say what you like, what you don't like. And, and we're not claiming these are your ads or anything like that. So, um, just have you take a look at some of these on LinkedIn and let me know what do you like, what do you not like? And and I have Microsoft up here. This is just in the feed, right? And there's all of you talk a little about there's some new features out whenever someone's listening to this that you should pay attention to, but there's also different kinds of ads. So this is what do you call this? Like an in feed ad or yeah, th these ones, yeah. the ones that appear in your newsfeed, which is the default experience, whether you're mobile on the app or on desktop like we are. And they call them sponsored content. Mm -hmm. There's a whole bunch of different flavors. They can be static image like this one is or video or carousel, like multiple tiles. Um, but this is just kind of a standard. And it's actually what I, uh, what I recommend starting with. So this is a Got really it. good example. Um, they also show up in your feed about every five slots. So okay. we'll talk about this Microsoft one. And then when you go to, we'll find scroll down. One, yeah. yeah just scroll, we'll scroll down. Yeah. See another. Um, so Microsoft obviously, uh, everyone who's listening here uh, has heard of Microsoft. So this is, we're not necessarily cold audiences here and it gives them a little bit of license that they can push basically directly to a hard offer. This one saying dynamics 365 is good for you. Uh, click here to check it out. So that's what I would consider a hard sale, but because Microsoft is such a brand for all of us, they're probably getting people who are willing to click through on that app. Yeah. Um, They've done a really good job of having the intro, which is the text up above, keeping it short because people on LinkedIn don't have a whole lot of time to mess around. And so they're just going to very quickly scan through. So you don't want a big block of text there. And down below that headline says create remote shopping experiences with Dyna Dynamics 365. Um, that's pretty straight to the point uh, and you know, letting people know here's what you can expect. And their imagery, it's it's obviously very stock photo-y, so I, I think they could do better that way, but yeah. it's very clean. And just reading that font and seeing that color, I know that that's a Microsoft color. So I think they've done a really good job branding-wise. What changes would you make? So you'd maybe change the picture a little bit. Anything else you would change with this? Uh, Yeah, I think picture's probably the only thing I'd change on this one there's a lot we can do that kind of front loads the value when someone is offering value first, but because this isn't really a value first ad, they've yeah. done a good job of writing the copy. I mean, it's short enough. It's not going to get cut off. Mm -hmm. um, I think the image is probably really the only thing that I would adjust here. Got it. All right, let's go down a little bit. Shout out to James Thompson. Love James and buy box experts. Um, let's see here. Where's the next? Oh, uh, there we go. Tatango. I know the tango. Yeah, I know Derek. Actually, I interviewed him. He's he's been on the show. Nice. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So we're gonna rip apart a past guest. That uh, <laughs> uh, this is interesting. So this he'll is appreciate video. this, AJ. I'm sure. Okay. <laughs> good. Uh, it, it's free advice, uh, whether you know, anyone takes it, it or not. It's a different right. deal. Um, so I uh, I haven't heard of Tango before, but they have 743 followers which isn't a ton, but it's also not something that I would expect from a fly by night. So immediately they've got the social proof that, uh, that I feel comfortable interacting with their ad. Um, it's there's action going because he's walking with his selfie stick. Uh, and in the first few seconds of video, it's really important to grab someone's attention with motion. So uh, that does that really well. Hmm. Um, the headline there, what's the biggest mistake SMS markets are making? Uh, 
uh, and that might be, I don't know if that's for marketers or if it's actually like SMS markets. Um, but I would want to, you're not bit sure more who he's targeting. Yeah. And, and I would want a little bit more information. I'd want to know, like, why are you talking to me? Um, because you know, this video on LinkedIn, it's just like Facebook. It plays muted and he doesn't have subtitles on here. Mm. So if I want to know, do I want to go and like get my headphones and turn this on yeah. to hear what this guy's So have about? subtitles for sure. Yes. Yep. Mm. Subtitles, super important. Uh, having a little bit more in the intro, like what's the biggest mistake SMS marketers are making? Uh, watch this video, like some kind of call to action here. Watch this video and we'll, we'll tell you so you can avoid those mistakes. I think that would add a lot here. And down below that headline, the contact to Tango to learn more uh, is... I mean, it's pretty straightforward. He um, needs to I, have a call that he needs to have some kind of guide, like what you're talking about. Like, yeah. you know, the three biggest mistakes we've seen or some some kind of guide of some sort, like an op, like a gated content. Yes. Yep. I think that would add a lot to it. Um, and he's done a really good job with the video. I mean, we know that there's action right up front. There's movement. That's good. Um, and it's also 46 seconds long. Uh, some of the best performing content we've seen has been like 15 to 45 seconds. So he's, he's right there keeping it short, not expecting someone to watch a 10 minute long video. Mm. So uh, yeah, that's my feedback on that one. Okay. We're going to send it to Derek, tag him. Derek, <laughs> cool. listening. Um, let's do one more if you're game. Perfect. Zenefits. Zenefits. Okay, cool. And uh, these guys I've consulted for them. Uh, it's a sharp team. So uh, I, I'm, hoping I can't pick apart too much. So, <laughs> You're like, the intro, this is my ad. This is the best thing I've ever seen in my life. No, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. these guys are amazing. Uh, Cause I want more business with them. Okay. So more than 15 HR templates for a safe reopening, including email templates, signage templates and checklist templates. Uh, I mean, this is good. They're um, they haven't pressed on a pain point, but if you read that and go, Ooh, HR templates, to for a safe reopening that's for me then they've done their job yeah. and I, I think that's probably the case yeah um they went a little bit long so you can see there's that see more that you'd have to click to read the rest of their ad so yeah. i try to keep things short enough that yeah you can read everything because most people that. aren't going to do that most exactly. people yeah yeah but obviously this is leading very much value first like here are these templates you can use which sounds very easy um down below the headline, download the coronavirus comeback kit. Very powerful. That one's excellent. Uh, image wise, there's a little bit of work I would do here. So um, this is very much a, a very blue kind of image. And LinkedIn is very blue, uh, gray and white. I mean, that's kind of their color scheme. Mm. And what we find with images, the job is not to get someone to click or convert. The job of the image is just to get someone to stop scrolling. Like stick out. Exactly. Just so they'll read your ad copy. The ad copy is going to tell them what they want to know. So this image, uh, I would love it if they maybe switched the, the, uh, brand colors here, they went background more orange and then have the button be blue. So we're just heavily saturating in orange, which yeah. is opposite of blue on the color wheel. That would be a good move. Yeah. The other thing is this is a beautiful image, but I can't read everything on there. It looks like a wall of text. Um, be, and so I, I try to follow the same billboard rule. That's like seven words or fewer on an image if you can, and they can be huge. They can take up the whole thing, but I, I want it. The to most be important like, check marks, like make them big. Exactly. And I mean, that text looks blurry to me. I don't know if it's just like on your screen, if it, it looks uh, pretty it's good. It's tiny. It looks fine. It's, it's small though. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I think that's the biggest challenge I, I'd have with that one is kind of fix the image, simplify it. Uh, maybe simplify the intro a little bit. Yeah. And then I think this is a near perfect ad. Cool. Yeah. And we'll talk about other types of ads and then um, we'll give a shot. There's uh, Derek talking about text message marketing uh, that puts butts in the seats. So you could check nice. out that from Satango. But um, there's other ads here. So those are, you know, I see the promoted stuff here. Um, I also see this ad at the top. I don't know if you have any opinions on what are the other ad options that people have. Yeah. So if you look over in the right side of your screen right now, that, that promoted section, those yeah. are called text ads mm -hmm. and uh, they are LinkedIn's cheapest ads, uh, which is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I told you you'll pay eight to $11 every time someone clicks in the feed. But if you click one of those promoted, 
Uh, they're oftentimes between about three to five dollars, so great value. But they are obviously an ad, so very few people look over there. We're kind of yeah. banner blind to them, and yeah. so they have a very very low click through rate, uh, which means you have to have a pretty large audience to even spend much money at all there. Um, and uh, you mentioned the the link at the very top. Yeah. Uh, that used to be called, it, there's a whole story here, but that used to be called a one by one that you would have to buy directly from LinkedIn sales team. Yeah. You couldn't buy it on the ad platform. And they kind of did away with that. Now it's basically, if you bid high enough to be yeah. the highest text link and promoted, uh, they also push you to the top. So you can see that the same headline. I bet that's the expensive direct. one, I imagine, because you're at the top of, I don't think that's rotated since we've been on here or anything like that. Yeah, it, it's, uh, to get the top slot, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're they're bidding like eight plus dollars for that click. So that click probably costs just as much as an, an in feed. Okay. I, I like to rank second or third in there um, to you know keep cost low. <laughs> what else? Um, I know there's. I mean, I've gotten some in mail ads. I don't know. You want to talk about that? Yeah. So there is a, an ad format. All the other ones that we've talked about so far, you it, there's very low risk. You only pay when someone clicks on your ad. So they're showing some kind of level of, of intent towards yeah. you. Um, sponsored in-mail is different. They, they actually call it sponsored messaging now. Mm -hmm. But you on these ones, you pay per send. So you'll pay, let's call it 20 to 45 cents to send it to someone. But then you have no guarantee that they'll see that they got it or open it or click on your offer inside. So it puts you three orders of magnitude away from the action yeah. that we were paying for before. And what do uh, you think about those? What's your opinion on those? So we run the largest uh, in mail account in the world yeah. for LinkedIn. Um, so we obviously have a lot of success with them, but we also find a lot of failure with them with our other clients. And so what it comes down to, you really need a very special kind of offer so that they don't come across spammy. Mm. Uh, something like, because of, of who you are in the industry, we want to give you an early access or sneak peek at something we're working on. Um, uh, we want to invite you as a VIP to this event we're putting on with your peers. Those types of things feel very special. And if mm. you got them as a cold email from someone, you might actually be excited about it. Mm. Uh, versus if it's just download my white paper, talk to my sales rep, yeah. uh, people are just going to ignore them and those will be the most expensive cost per click you've ever seen. <laughs> What are some of the most aggressive or best offers you've either helped someone with or you've seen? It could be it could be in the in mail or it could be just offering in one of the uh, one of the ads. Uh, so like aggressive meaning like in a good way, like it was so generous. Like if I said if I said in mail, maybe not even believable, but like, hey, I have two front row, you know, courtside seats to the Utah Jazz for you, AJ. Um, they're on me because of X, Y, Z. That may be like an aggressive offer. It also may not be believable, but you know, I'm curious of what you've seen work really well. That is super aggressive, like generous. Yeah. We've, we've seen, uh, giveaways work really well. So I, I would say, uh, my first inclination was a client who came to us and said, we want to give, uh, offer a gift card to CEOs for taking a demo or hopping on the phone with us. And I'm yeah. like, Pfft. These CEOs of big companies, they're rich. They're not going to care about a, a 25 or a 50 or a hundred dollar gift card. Um, yeah. But sure enough, it converts like really these, these people. They're just like, uh -huh. just like the rest of us, apparently. Uh, uh, so we've seen gift cards to incentivize huh. a phone call work well. Anything else? Any other like uh, monetary or gift offers that you've seen do well? Um, we've seen book giveaways work really well as them. So mm -hmm. if, uh, we know the free plus shipping offers are really popular on Facebook right now. Um, but we had a client who just straight would say, Hey, we will, we will pay for shipping and we will send you this book. That's cool. And they, they know that if you read the first 10 pages of their book, uh, you're going to be sold and, and nice. you'll want to work with them. So get it in their hands so that they're completely open. free. So people will say, I'll pay, we'll pay for the shipping. We'll pay for the book. We'll send it to you. And that works. Yes. Yep. Nice. You mentioned a couple of features, new features. Do you want to talk about those? Yeah. Uh, video ads on LinkedIn have been kind of challenging for a while. Um, you know, we saw this with, with Derek's ad. Uh, you know, he's paying a pretty penny for that. He, you'll probably pay between, uh, let's call it 
uh, 15 and 25 cents per person who watches at least two seconds of it. Oh, really? Yeah. And on Facebook. So he's got to put pay... subtitles in those, AJ. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're like so Facebook... nice about it. I'm like, I'm going to text a message. You could be getting more conversions there. <laughs> put some subtitles there. <laughs> but what we find is, uh, you know, for uh, getting someone to watch at least three seconds of your Facebook video, you're paying like one to two cents. So one to two cents versus 15 to 25 is a big difference. Mm. And so for a long time, I just said, Hey, if you want to bring video creative to LinkedIn, make sure you've tested it on Facebook or YouTube first and bring your best stuff. Um, but just a couple weeks ago, LinkedIn released video retargeting. And now we can create audiences where we say, if you've watched at least 50% of this video, now I want to, the next time you come back, I want to show you the next one in the sequence. And, mm. um, this is, it's a lot more powerful. You can also do the same thing. Uh, they have a, a form product that rather than having someone click on your, your sponsored content ad uh, or your in-mail ad and send them to a landing page. Now it's just a, you interact with the ad and a little drawer will slide down with a form within it. Hmm. And same kind of thing. I was like, well, I'd rather get the traffic to my website where I can retarget them with my Google and my Facebook ads that are incredibly inexpensive and very good. Um, now they, they release this ability to retarget by whether you opened a form or whether you filled the form out. Hmm. And so those are the new excitement that we have on LinkedIn. Very cool. Um, I want to talk about organic reach for a second and what's the importance of, I mean, maybe some Microsoft maybe doesn't play a role, but, but, um, like Derek of optimizing the, the actual LinkedIn profile itself, if you're doing ads. So I pulled yours up here. So I don't know, um, what should people think about doing to optimize their actual profile and, and does that even play a role in the ads or, or not really? All right, so, th so there's uh, good news and bad news here, depending on, okay. on uh, how you think of it. Um, LinkedIn ads will only work for a company's page, not a, a, not a personal profile. And we have a lot of clients who are concerned with this. Like, before we launch ads, do I need to go and work on my personal profile? And the answer is no. Uh, someone can click on your ad to go to your company page, but yeah. they won't ever make it to your personal profile. So don't worry about trying to spruce it up. Um, but it does mean that your company profile, you should be, uh, maybe not proud of it, but at least don't be ashamed of it. Um, <laughs> right. And there's not a whole lot you can do to your company page. I mean, yeah. it's like you put a logo. Do so I click here? Is that what I do? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you can see our, you know, I'm not especially proud of our page, but I'm not ashamed of it either. Like 793 followers, uh, not a ton, but you know, it's, it's enough that people know that we're not a fly by night. Yeah. Um, the about sections filled out. There's a, a little bit of content that's been posted. So I think that's um, something you want to make sure, you know, you've actually shared stuff here. You can tell people like the lights are on in someone's home. Um, so I just pulled up. Tango, yeah. Yeah. They've filled out quite a bit more like this. Uh, I would look at this and it immediately inspires more confidence than mine does. <laughs> mm -hmm. So they should spruce up their, their company page for sure. Yeah. And if you click on that ads tab down there, this is kind of cool. Uh, you can do this for any competitor of yours. Um, if you click on the ads tab, uh, you can actually see the oh, last right here. six months. Oh, uh, yep. That's the one you can actually see the last six months of ads they've run. So oh, this wow. top one, that's an example of a carousel ad where you can actually like scroll through on mobile. You swipe, uh, here on desktop, you just click that arrow. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you can see how, they're showing you different experiences in wow. their app. That's um, interesting. Yeah. So it looks like they're doing a lot of testing on, on those carousel versions. And the next one is the one that we actually saw in your feed, which is kind of cool. So why did, why does LinkedIn do that? Uh, why do they allow? Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, it's all because Facebook was drug in front of Congress <laughs> when Mark Zuckerberg had to go and testify uh, in front of Congress, like about the transparency and, uh, the issues with Russian voting, LinkedIn was like, we don't want to have to testify to Congress. So they, they, uh, they gave full visibility on ads. People are running exactly. Our companies yep, are we running. Didn't have it before then. <laughs> oh, wow. That's pretty interesting. Yeah. That and is, what a, they are, yeah. They're protecting you a little bit as an advertiser. You can see, you can't tell the social proof on those ads. They don't show you how many likes or how many comments. Yeah. They're not showing you the comments. They don't show you um, how successful they are. Exactly. So, 
you can see the creative, but you have to guess was that good or bad. Hmm. Thanks for sharing that. That's that's pretty amazing, actually. They're they're doing quite a bit of testing here. You could see. Oh yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if the video ad that you received was part mm. of retargeting. So if you went to Tatango's site uh, because you were preparing for the interview, mm. I wouldn't be surprised if you get that ad because you're part of a retargeting audience, right. and he knows he's showing this ad to a uh, to a warmer audience. So mm. um, maybe subtitles and a strong call to action may, maybe aren't all that important. That makes sense. Um, any suggestions on outreach, like the organic reach? Cause I know when, when I mentioned you have run a lot of ads, but you also have helped with organic reach and, in, in I don't know if you call it on LinkedIn SEL, but what, um, suggestions do you have for organic reach and, um, on that end? Yeah. So first of all, I should preface this by saying, uh, LinkedIn is such an exciting channel organically right now because the organic reach is massive. Uh, it's the easiest network in the world to go viral on right now. Hmm. Um, to give wow. you an example, you know, I've, I've got something like, uh, like, you know, 14,000 followers or something. Um, it's, uh, really pretty standard for me to, to post things that get 50,000, 60,000 views wow. and you go, Whoa, I mean, who's seeing this? The fact of the matter is only about 4% of people on LinkedIn will publish content. I don't know if they're scared or whatever, uh, or they just don't think to, but only 4% of people are creating, but a hundred percent need a full feed full of stuff when they log in. So what they're doing is they're saying, Hey, if someone, if someone you're connected to likes comments or reshares one of your posts, then it's then eligible to go to some of their connections. Mm. Um, so even hitting like is, is akin to a retweet on, on Twitter. Really? Uh, yeah. And, and maybe not fully, like you'll only get uh, access to maybe call it five or 10% of their audience, but this is how stuff goes viral. If you create people that, if you create posts uh, personally that people want to interact with, they want to hit like, they want to comment, then it's going to go to their followers, some of from their likes or comments, and it goes to their followers and just keeps going. Hmm. What do you suggest as far as manual best practices for manual outreach to, I would say, you know. yeah, I, I love that you're asking this because I feel like spam on LinkedIn, like this mass connection spam uh, is a, a huge issue. And, uh, and I know quite a few agencies who just perpetuate this. Um, my best advice for you in doing outreach is do research like, don't just send out a hundred connection requests with copy paste messaging because it's easy to hit a whole bunch of people. Spend a few minutes on their profile. Uh, look through the types of things that they comment on, the types of things that they share, um, and then you know things on their profile. And then reach like out. Like customize the messaging. Yes. I mean, you want to customize it. Yeah. If you're just reaching out to me saying, "Hey, I see we share." some connections or we're in the same city, we should connect. Totally. Sorry, that's not a good enough reason for me to, to want to connect with you. I have a very busy inbox and I want to guard that. Yeah. So make sure you've done your research and they can tell you're reaching out to them uh, because of them and not because they're just a number to you. And as you're reaching out, are there certain elements that I like must include in the actual profile? You know, for the ads, it's more the company profile for manual outreach. It's a personal profile. What are the must haves or maybe big mistakes you see people making with optimizing their actual personal profile? Yeah, I, I think uh, I have what I call the Pareto principle for profiles, uh, probably just because the alliteration is cool, all those P's, but um, this is, it's the 80, 20 rule. So it's the 20% of changes you can make to your profile that make 80% of the difference. So the things that are included here are like number one, your picture. So the, the, a porthole for your face. It's round because they want a face in there. And so you don't want to have like you and a, you and Mark Zuckerberg or something or, or Oprah. It um, cuts the half their head off or something. Exactly. Yeah. Or even squeezing you both in there. It's like, well, we, we don't know. Uh, we don't know which one's who. Um, so you do, you want it close enough. My guide is if I'm going to go and meet someone in a Starbucks for the first time ever, and they've got me, my profile open on their, their mobile device. I want them to be able to recognize me. So close enough that if I walk in, they'll see a chubby ginger, uh, but far enough away that it's not like, whoa, bro, back up. Like you're in my face. Um, <laughs> right. And you want to look pretty inviting. Like don't have a scowl on your face, make it, you know, 
professional and inviting. The next piece is down below where you see LinkedIn ads expert host of the LinkedIn ads show. This is called your headline. And this used to be where people would just put like VP of whatever at yeah. X company, but that doesn't tell people anything unless that's like a fortune 500 company that everyone would recognize. Sure. That's impressive. But if you're not, this is where you get to share. Here's the value. People I are like, I have no idea what you do. Exactly. Yes. Uh, you, you want to say like, imagine someone is reading this and they're wondering what's in it for me. Like, why should I want to be connected to you or have a conversation with you? Uh, that's what your headline does. And it, it answers that question. Um, the next piece is that what, where you see my geography, Salt Lake city metropolitan area. I'm actually in a city called Lehigh. That's about 30 minutes South of Salt Lake. Uh, if you're from Utah, you know that this is the tech epicenter of Utah. This is where all the, the B2B tech companies are. And that's kind of cool. But outside of Utah, Lehigh just sounds like a made up word. <laughs> so uh, I like to, you know, we do business with people all over the country and all over the world. And so I'm going to claim my nearest metro area so that it's much more likely that people are going to look at me and say, oh, he's he's legit. He's in a city. Yep. Yep. And and really, that's it. I mean, that's you it. see that about section down below where you get two, two lines and then I see more. Uh, this is where you can kind of like. Nice. Uh, tease this people, looks get good. Interested. Yeah. And you can do more here. You can insert emojis and that kind of thing to break it up. Um, but, but the first two lines are really what's going to convince someone whether or not they want to connect with you or read more. And so if you do those four things, that's, that's the 20% that make 80% of the difference. Love it. I love Pareto principle. I love 80, 20. So thanks for sharing that. Um, AJ, first of all, I want to thank you. Um, I have a couple last questions, but um, I just want to encourage people to check out your site. Um, here it is, b2link.com. Check it out. Um, he's got, I love it. He's got a video. Like if you check out all his pages, he's got a video or it's not a video, but an audio that you can listen to that is specific to each of those pages. So I may have listened to 80% of them. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> about that, but they're really, they're really informative um, and so check it out. If you're thinking of doing LinkedIn ads, which if you have a high life, you know, client lifetime value, you should be thinking about LinkedIn ads. Um, you know, AJ, the, one of the, the things I thought was interesting from your background is, uh, you went on a mission to Ukraine and, I um, I would love to hear how that has maybe influence you or what your learnings are from going on a mission, going into a foreign country and not knowing anyone, how it influences you personally and in business. So what was, what was the mission? Tell me. Yeah. So I, I served a mission for my church. Uh, I'm a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, you may have heard of the Mormons. That's us. And at the age of 19, I went to go serve a mission and I, I paid for it myself and my, my parents helped. Uh, but, you know, I paid for uh, myself to go two years in a place that I didn't choose. I received a, a, what they call a mission call, and it just said, you will be speaking Russian and you will be serving in Ukraine. And wow. I just go, cool. Uh, what I learned from- Do they just one, pick you out of a hat? How do they actually assign you? <laughs> uh, they, they, uh, they essentially have, uh, they pray about each person, each applicant and, and go with where they feel like it is best for that person. Mm, um, got it. And, and so, so that it, it's divine for them. Uh, for me, I definitely felt that I was, you know, I studied Spanish all through high school and I, I really wanted to go to South America somewhere, but I'm so mm. glad I went to Ukraine. I'm so glad I learned Russian that would just did amazing things. So do you me. actually learn Russian? Yeah. That seems like yeah. it's a hard language to learn. Yeah. It was super hard. Uh, totally different alphabet, all that. Um, What's really cool about Russian, though, is uh, the word order in a sentence doesn't matter. You can say the last uh, word in the sentence. You can say the first word in the sentence and alternate in. And hmm. the sentence has the same meaning. Every word, uh, whether it's an adjective, a noun, or a verb, it gets what are called declinations, where you change it based off of the gender and how you're using it. Hmm. Um, so for me, I, I love math. And for me, speaking Russian is kind of like solving equations all the time. You're always wondering like, ooh, if I know I'm going to use this noun, what do I have to do to the verb or what do I have to do? Hmm. Anyway, 
that, that was one of my big takeaways was uh, in learning Russian, I got this insatiable love for just taking in new information. Um, I, I always want to be studying something and learning something more because it was such a hard language and I got used to every morning you know, studying. What was one of your favorite experiences going to the Ukraine? Oh, uh, I mean, there were, uh, there was one experience where I went to go contact a lady and, you know, on a mission, on a religious mission, you're essentially knocking on doors and out talking to people all the time, just trying to see, you know, who wants to learn about Jesus Christ, um, which, you know, it, we've talked about like offers that are asking too much, like you get turned down a lot. Um, uh, <laughs> And yeah. I, even if you had a briefcase full of cash, I'd be like, why are you on my doorstep? Get off. You know, like exactly. <laughs> even if you have something they want, it's, it's, you know, it's tough. It's a tough crowd. Yeah, totally. Uh, I, I had one lady, I knocked on her door and it, she was a, an older lady and she opened the door and just went <gasps> and we started talking and she was just kind of exasperated. And she told us later, she's like, I had a dream about you last night. And in this dream, you came and brought me a book and taught me about Jesus. And wow. oh man, I don't have control over like what goes in people's <laughs> dreams. Um, but, but that was pretty, pretty shocking and pretty cool for me. AJ, what's the, um, you know, you're an ads person, right? The conversion rate. What was the conversion rate of someone actually you going up knocking on the door and they'd actually talk to you? Oh man, uh, I would say we would go and probably knock on, uh, I would say 40 to 50 doors at a time. And we'd probably get three people who invited us back okay. later to, to come and teach them. So uh, not a great conversion a rate. A 10%-ish <laughs> conversion rate. What would you say when you walk up? Like, uh, I'd usually say like, uh, hi, my name is blank. Uh, In I'm Russian. Like, Oh, uh, you're saying it in good. Russian. No, I'm not asking you to say, oh, but yes. you were, you were actually singing it in Russian at the time. <laughs> I was, not in yeah. English. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say I, I'm a, I'm a representative of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. I uh, would love to, to talk to you about Jesus Christ or, or, you know, we'd try different opening lines. Like, do you believe in Jesus Christ or what do you know about him? Um, to try to start conversation. What would work best with opening lines? I'm uh, fascinated by door to door, anything. It's like, it's got to be some of the most, the, the, some of the toughest thing someone can do, you know, dealing with rejection. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I think the best, uh, the best conversation starter we had was, do you believe in Jesus Christ? Because they came from the Soviet bloc era where uh, it was actually mandated. The, the, the government forced everyone to be atheists. And so you'd have a lot of people who lived through that. They would mm. claim to the government they were atheists, but inwardly they would they would believe. And so when you ask them, do you believe in Jesus Christ? They would say like, yeah, I do. I've believed for a long time. Mm. And they're eager to talk about him and then we can start a conversation. Love it. You didn't know we were going to go that route. But I think, <laughs> I mean, if you talk to anyone who's been on a mission, who's knocked on doors, they're some of the most successful people I know because they can just deal with, you know, a door literally shutting on, you know, slamming in their face. So um, I want to just say thank you, AJ. Thank you for sharing your knowledge, expertise. Everyone check out b2link.com and uh, check them out. Thanks, AJ. Thanks so much. And uh, if any of you are interested in LinkedIn ads, check out the podcast. Uh, we go really deep. So you probably won't want to listen if you don't want to go really deep on LinkedIn ads, but it's the LinkedIn ads show. Very cool. Thank you. Thanks, Jeremy. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes Walked through the fire Came out better on the other side See, life's like a beach If you find the sand right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand